Good day. Today we're doing a walkthrough on the Rhino 500 bandsaw mill, just having a look at the different components that you will receive when you order a Rhino 500 bandsaw mill. Generally speaking, the machine will be sent on two pallets. The first pallet will consist of the head carriage and the second pallet will consist of the bed sections stacked on top of each other. In some cases, the customer might request the bed sections to be sent disassembled. The advantage of this is that you can save on transport costs and do the assembly your side. In this specific case, and in most cases, the bed sections will be sent already pre-assembled, with the only assembly required being the joining of your bed sections. On the Rhino 500, the standard log length is 4.8 meters. On this length, there are three bed sections. The first and the last section are unique in that they have the stoppers to prevent the head carriage from running past the machine. For those customers who have opted to have an additional bed section added as to allow a greater log length capacity, you will simply detach your front piece and add the additional center unit to your machine. The machine can be extended to accommodate whatever log size you may, may require. In some cases, customers might opt to, for example, run two three meter logs one after each other, which could easily be achieved on the 6.8 meter log capacity when you choose to opt for one additional bed sections. Let's have a look at the various pieces that will come with your machine. We have your three bed sections, which include your log stops and your log clamping mechanisms. We have the saw head carriage. This specific unit is the petrol model. The customer can choose based on their preference between electric or petrol. Along with each machine would be your tooling, your bolts for joining your bed sections, your spare parts kit if you opted to take this along with the machine, always a good idea, and then your bed joining pieces. Let's have a look at an in-depth view of the bed sections on the Rhino 500 mil. The Rhino consists of a double track system for extra stability on your saw head. We find this design gives far more longevity for your machine. We have our cross sections, our log stop, our log clamps, and then the various bolts which make up the modular system of your sawmill. In developing the Rhino brand, a big focus has been to provide a machine that is extra robust and reliable in the tough conditions here in the field. That is why our steel thickness is comparatively quite a bit higher than most of the competition. The amount of bolting in, uh, reinforcement uh, exceeds what would be required as a standard mill, giving the machine extra stability, extra durability, and extra long-term reliability. To make sure that your machine is level on the ground, you simply adjust the height of your bed sections using the adjuster feet. It is of course important to ensure that your bed sections are square in alignment with the head carriage. Let's have a look at the saw head on the Rhino 500 bandsaw mill. This specific unit is a petrol unit. 
some of the features we can see on the machine immediately. The emergency stop at the back, the engine ignition, the head adjustment. If you wish to bring up your mill, you simply turn and raise or drop to lower. Moving to the front, looking at the front of the mill, we have our frontal emergency stop, we have our water tank which leads into the blade lubrication and here we have the blade tensioning system. Next to the blade tensioning system we can see the blade guide adjustment. This allows you to easily bring in or out the distance between your blade guides. We will now move on to the assembly of your Rhino Mill. The first step is going to be to attach your saw carriage to your back track piece. This can be done by using a forklift, jacks or simple manpower. The first step to assemble your Rhino is to ensure that your bed sections have been correctly joined. Secondly, we want to attach our head carriage to the back bed section. This can be done in two ways. The most common way is to remove your stoppers at the back of the bed section which will allow you to insert the sections into the carriage of the machine. Alternatively, you can load the head carriage from the opposing side of the bed section which would take away the need to remove the stoppers. Let's do that now. Here we can see Michael removing the stoppers at the back of the bed section. So here we can see the guys have added the saw head carriage onto the back, back rail. They've reattached the stoppers at the back. For this application, we've used a forklift, as you can see, with the head lifted onto the back carriage. There are many ways that you can achieve this. You do not necessarily need a forklift. Once the machine is on the carriage and it is correctly set, you will see that everything runs smoothly. Have a look at the carriage configuration. When attaching the sawhead carriage, the guide rails have to run between the roller bearings and above the guide plate at the bottom. This will ensure that the roller bearings inside the head carriage run smoothly across the guide system. On the Rhino 500, this is applicable to both sides of the bed carriage. This was done to provide extra stability in the field compared to many uh, other sawmills which use a single post system. The Rhino 500 is configured with a four post system. Here we're going to just to illustrate the process of uh, changing the saw blades on your Rhino 500. The first step has been to uh, detension the saw blade. The operator will now attach the new blade to the machine.
The next step is to retension the saw blade using the tensioning mechanism. To achieve the correct level of tensioning, the aim is to have the indicator bolt reach the guide plate at the back of the head. To, when changing belts on your machine, you would first detension the belt tensioning system, reattach your new belts onto the machine, and then retention using the tensioning mechanism. To start your petrol runner 500, ensure that the petrol tap is in the open position. The second step, ensure that the throttle is set down. When starting for the first time, you would need to operate the clutch on the side of the unit and simply turn your key. So, to initiate the saw blade, the operator increases the throttle. Low speed. High speed. Shot. When done with operation, mm -hmm. the operator switches off the bandsaw mill and closes the petrol tap. True. At the end of the day's operation, the operator should also ensure that the blade tensioning has been loosened. In the morning, when you start up again, retension your saw blade.